it's a it's a good time to come before the Lord. It's it always a good 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 time to come before Him. Amen. And this morning, I just want you to really understand that God really loves you. He cares so much about your life. And this morning, it is uh, He who has given you the strength to really be sitting here. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, we will. Uh, go straight into the word and uh, I will continue from where I left off last week Um, you know when we are treating things like this number one the enemy is not happy at all hallelujah he's not excited at all you know his plan and his purpose for you is that you will really struggle and get to a place where you get so worried in your affliction and in your struggle and in your pain such that you are not able to really praise god you are not able to honor god you are not able to do anything that will bring glory to god hallelujah but what god teaches us is contrary to that and therefore, any time you are getting to know the truth, he begins to fight it. And he makes sure that you would not pay attention. Or even if you hear, you will not use it. And you would also not um, follow anything. In fact, one of the key things he does is to make sure that you forget by the time the service closes you have forgotten what was preached amen but we are so thankful to technology that even when you forget you can go and then play it back and then listen to it again and you you know my views on (laughs) technology but um there's a good and a bad (laughs) uh, side to it but i want you to really stick to the good part and make sure that you go back and listen to it amen so we've been dealing with something uh that is is very interesting i mean i I think it is extremely interesting but because of our misunderstanding we don't really pay attention to it but we all go through it it's interesting because we all go through it and what is it it is trials affliction suffering pain whatever you want to call it amen every christian goes through it and they are bound to come in fact whether you like it or you don't like it you will go through one affliction or the other whether it pleases you or it doesn't please you you will go through it so what we need to do is to understand it prepare for it and know how we can overcome it amen because if we don't and we don't understand it whenever it comes it really throws us off and we begin to complain we begin to talk evil about even god amen but my prayer this morning is as we are coming to an end of what we've been doing for the last i think three weeks by the grace of god you would make some decisions this morning amen okay so um last week we looked at um the purpose of suffering and we looked at four of the uh things that we i mean uh purposes and uh, it's left we looked at what five and we left with the last one the five that we looked at number one it proves our the genuineness of our faith when we go through trials the way we go through it by the time we come to an end of it you realize that it proves whether your faith is genuine because if your faith is not genuine when you go through these trials you tend to lose your faith hallelujah so jesus prayed for peter and his friends and he said that i pray Sit, uh, in fact, well, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. Because if your faith is genuine, it won't fail. But if you have fake faith, it will fail. Mm, of course, yes. 
Because if you know what you believe in, if you know whom you have trusted in, you will stand and you will not fail. Hallelujah. Okay. So it proved the genuineness of our faith. Number two was, it helps grow our faith. When we go through trials and we really pass through it, by the end of it, we, you will realize that your faith has grown. Bible says that it brings us to maturity. It makes us mature. Hallelujah. When we go through trials, by the end of it, we realize that we have become mature. Amen. Number three, and we gave examples. I mean, we don't have time to, uh, if you uh, missed anything, go back and then listen to, uh, it's on, I think, Facebook on, and um, YouTube. Yeah, so you can go watch it. And if you wanted to, you can go to the media team. They will give it to you. Number three is it develops, it helps you develop perseverance. Because as you go through certain things, today it might be tough. Going through it might be extremely tough. But by the time you come out of it, you have learned perseverance, how to persevere in difficult situations. So when it comes again or when something else comes, because you were able to stand the first one, you are able to persevere through the other one. Your endurance level increases. So you are able to endure more than the first one. Watch it. Anything that you have gone through before, the second time or another time that the thing comes, you are able to stand better than the first time. Hallelujah. Why? Because your, your endurance level is built up. Take somebody who goes to the gym and works out in the gym. If you go to the gym and you begin to I mean, go to on, on the treadmill, you, you realize that your, and because your endurance level is not high, you, as you walk or you run on the treadmill, it gets to a certain point you can't really carry on. Hallelujah. But the next time, because you have done the first time, you go back and you go back and you go back. And by the time you realize, if you were doing 30 minutes now, you are doing 30, one hour. Because you can even endure more. Hallelujah. So we need to really understand that as we go through certain things, it builds up our endurance level. And we become strong to persevere through even major trials. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of trials because they will come. Be ready to embrace them and walk through them. Hallelujah. Psalm 23 tells us that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will run away. I will do what? Why? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, David knows what he has gone through. So this time, he says that I don't care. Even though I walk through it, I will stand and walk through it. Because I know last week you were with me in that trial. Two weeks ago you were with me in the other trial. So if you were with me in that trial, you are going to be with me in this one too. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what I'm going through, I will not be afraid. Hallelujah. Many of us, we fear. Hallelujah. When things happen, we, we, are, we, we just go... I said, he who fights, he who fights and run away, he will live to fight another day. Hallelujah. I told you a story some time ago. There's a woman, because of my work, I go to the bush, bush proper, where you have snakes. And we met this woman with two kids. And I mean kids, like none of them was 10 years. Very young kids, like probably maybe 7 and 5 or 8 and 6, something like that. And we were in a farm working. And he, she was coming from a farm beyond our farm. And was carrying, and it was in the morning, early morning. And she was carrying, um, uh, how do you call that thing? That thing that you bath children in pan or whatever yeah what, what, how do you call that thing basin yeah 
So when uh, a silver one, and when she got there, she stopped, and we asked her why, and she she said we should come and see. So we went. Beloved, the snake I saw, even though it was dead, we all ran away before we went back to see it. And we were looking at this woman. She's not like a big woman. She's like, I mean, probably, let me see who, I mean, you are taller. I mean, she, she's very small. I mean, and I look at her and I look at the snake again and I said, how did you manage to do this? And she said this. She said, when I got to the farm and I saw the snake, he said, it's early morning and I think the snake was resting or whatever. She said, when I saw the snake, I ran away. Then I just asked myself, if I run away, I will never be able to come to this farm again. Because any time I'm coming to the farm, I will ask myself, where is this snake? So I will never be able to come to this farm again. So she returned. And she said, I have to kill this snake. Beloved, this is not a small snake. I'm talking to you about a big snake. I'm try I took a picture of it, but I can't find it. I'm looking for it. One day I'll show it to you. So I looked at the woman and I looked at the snake. And I said, so how did you kill it? And she said, I took my cutlass and I decided to go against it. And she said, she was, he, the snake was still lying there. So she went for it and the snake lifted the head. And immediately she, the snake lifted the head, she cut it. And she said, my, my cutlass was very sharp. So the moment it cut the head, that was it. The snake was finished. And she said, I told myself, if I run away from this snake, the fun will be for the snake. Because I can never. And that's true. Because the next time you'll be going there, you don't know where it is. You know, the, the problem with us is that many of us are running from the trials we have to face. Hallelujah. The circumstances that are bitter, we are running away from them. And then they keep coming back. And in fact, when the devil knows that you are afraid, he will even use it to torment your life. Because every time he's going to bring something that is going to make you afraid. Because he knows you are afraid. Hallelujah. So we need to begin to face the things that we are afraid of. Trials will come. None of us sitting here love trials or suffering or pain but they will come because they are bound to come bible makes us understand that they are bound to come and he says that rejoice in them mm. how can i we'll get there amen so <laughs> number three is we develop perseverance when we go through trials number four is um, trials and affliction enable us to help others going through trials. After I have gone through my trial, I have, after I have gone through my pain, when I see you going through pain, I can help you. Anyone who has gone through divorce knows how painful it is. So if he sees you going through a similar process, he or she knows how to talk to you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have gone through some kind of affliction that someone else is going through the same thing, it helps you because you are equipped enough to help that person. So we go through these trials and when we have come out of it, it enables us to help others. Hallelujah. So one, it's a very powerful purpose. There are many people going through things and they don't have anyone to really talk to because you don't understand their pain you don't understand what they're going through because you have never gone through that before but if you have gone through 
you are experienced, you have some kind of uh, uh, thoughts and uh, ideas about it, and you can talk to the person and be able to encourage the person. And you see, because you share in his or her pain, he's able to relate. That's why Jesus had to go through all that he had to go through. Bible says that he's a high priest who has really suffered like we have. So he's able to empathize with us. Amen. Because what you are going through, he went through. He's the only one who went through every kind of temptation yet was without sin. So when you are going through a temptation, remember Jesus went through it. Hallelujah. When you are going through some kind of pain, he went through it. The only difference is that he was able to overcome it. So he is able to talk to you and let you understand. That's why we need to run to him all the time. Because, in fact, maybe maybe I have not gone through what you are going through, but Jesus has. Amen. Maybe there are things that your mother didn't face in her marriage. That is why you need to learn to talk to God about your marriage, about your situation. Because... The person you are running to, and I'm not saying don't run to people, don't talk to people. And I will let you understand who you have to go to. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you that let's first talk to Jesus. Let's talk to him first. No matter what the situation is, learn to talk to Jesus. When I counsel people, people who are going to marry, one of the things I, I, I make them understand that look, anything that I'm going to teach you, whatever I'm going to, you probably might not face it in your marriage. You may face something else. The best thing that you can learn from what we are doing is to really know that God is the ultimate solver of every problem. So no matter what you go through in your marriage, in your circumstances, in your situation, you learn to go to God first. If you are sick, go to him first before you go to a doctor. Hallelujah. If you don't have money, go to him first before you go to the bank. Why? Because he became poor so that you can become rich. So he knows what prophet is. He knows it. So he knows how to go through poverty. And he knows. You see, the interesting thing is that he also knows when you are broke and you don't have anything, he knows how you can get money. Because he got to a point where he, couldn't ha- he didn't have money to pay his tax. But he knew where there was money. Where was it? Hallelujah. He told Peter, go, catch the first fish. that Go to fish. The first one that you catch, open the mouth, you get money. Go pay your tax and pay mine. Hallelujah. Maybe yours is not a fish. But he will tell you where you can get money to solve that problem. But we don't go to him. Our first stop is the bank. Hallelujah. With compound interest. Hallelujah. You pay the principal and pay interest. I don't think Peter paid any principal. Let, and in fact, to catch a fish, all that you need is a worm. We don't buy them. They are free. You catch them. <laughs> and then you go. Hallelujah. The bait for you to catch a fish is just a worm. Who buys worms? Do you pay for worms? Go, go, if I go down there, dig, you find one right now. You don't have to go far. Hallelujah. Anyway, so when you have gone through it, you gain, hallelujah, experience to help others. Number five. It kills your pride and make you humble. When you go to trial, if you are a proud person, it brings you down. And Paul said it. He said that for me not to be conceited, God put a what? 
so that I will not brag. <laughs> I'm praying and everything is going, but this one, I prayed and prayed and it's not happening. So, for Paul's life, he knew that there are certain things he couldn't pray for. Hallelujah. So, he came to that point knowing that, you see, I am not God. <laughs> I can pray and the dead will rise. I can pray and the, and the lame will walk. I can pray. But what, what, Paul prayed for all kinds of prayer for people. But there was one, at least, that he prayed that it never went. So it, it humbled him. It made him see that God is greater than him. And God even told him that it is in your weakness that you are made. Hallelujah. So, you see, we need to understand these things. They are not coming to destroy you. If you are able to start, I don't know the kind of suffering you are going through, beloved. I don't know. I don't know what you are going through. But try to find out the purpose for which that trial has come. Try to find out. Try to really understand it. And walk through it with the grace of God. Not with your strength. Ask for your strength. It will help you. But with the grace of God. It, it's, there is absolutely nothing that is too hard for the Lord to do. So no matter what you go through. Just understand. I want everyone inside this room this morning. And anyone who will listen to this later. I want you to understand that you can grow in your anointing. To become whoever you want to be in the Lord. Yet there will be trials. There will be. They will come. I don't know how, which form they will take. But they will come one way or the other. I don't know. You see, my trial will not be your trial. Your trial will not be my trial. But there will be a trial. I don't know what I will go through. Amen. Amen. And I don't know what you go through. Two people can go through the same thing. One will stand, one will fall. Yes. Two people. The same condition. One will stand, one will fall. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to really understand these things will happen. But how are we going to handle them? How are we going to walk through them? Hallelujah. Amen. And there is nothing, there is no temptation that is above you. None whatsoever. As long as we submit to God, He will give us the grace to go through it. In, 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 uh, you can't say, I can. There is, there is uh, I don't know what it's, uh, there's a saying, I'll, 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 I'll just paraphrase it. There's a saying that, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Hallelujah. And, Bible says, in Hebrews chapter, it says that, in your struggle against sin, have you suffered to the extent of shedding your blood? Huh? Okay, I thought you said yes. I would have asked you why. How are you sitting here? If you have shed your blood, how are you sitting here? Because if you have shed your blood, you'll be dead by now. Amen. But the point is that you have not gone to that extent. In, in the Bible, some people, their head was cut. Some people were crucified. Some people were put on fire alive. Hallelujah. But they still didn't die. Some, some, they cut their head, they died. Some, they saw them in two, they died. Yes. What have you gone through? That you are complaining so much. Hallelujah. If, there, if you don't go through anything, sometimes complacency sets in. We become very complacent and we become very proud. But when we go through certain things, it humbles us. It brings us to a place of humility. And we begin 
to know that we are not who we thought we were. You may have thought you were somebody who could really stand everything and you are so powerful and so whatever. But what you will go through will humble you. And you will come to the point of knowing that, wow, after all, I'm a human being. Through trials, we grow in our prayer life. Now, how many of us sitting here this morning? No problem, nothing. Assembly and your trouble be unseen. Me, yes, you can be a because we bought to my ma. I'm not sick. I have a job. I'm not probably sorry. Quite a juma. No, my pawn, no, my bar. I go to church. Everything is fine. How many of us will pray for two hours when everything is fine like that? You and the sister, you pray when there's nothing to pray about. <laughs> huh? Who else? Okay, fine. How many of us will pray two hours if everything is bad, nothing is going well? We are down, we, we are going through something that we need some breakthrough and we are so down, there is nothing coming. How many of us will pray? Somebody says more than two hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So some of us, the trials have to come so that we learn how to pray. Because there are many people in church today, they don't even know how to pray. They don't even know how to pray. However, Jesus didn't say that, wait until trouble comes and then you pray. He says, do what? Yes, pray with us. I'm talking, that's, that's uh, uh, Thessalonians. Paul wrote that. I said, what did Jesus himself say? So that you don't get into it. Not that when you are in it and you are falling, that's when you pray. Hallelujah. Because at that point, you probably might not even be able to pray. So you have to pray beforehand. So many of us, our prayer lives were developed when we went through crisis. That is when we began to pray all kinds of prayer. You know the Bible talks about all kinds of prayer. But we don't know about it until you get into crisis. And nothing is working. <laughs> this is a sad situation but I'll say it I know somebody who used to make mockery Christian who I'm not talking about somebody who is not a Christian I'm talking about a Christian who used to make mockery and say people who go to church within the week like you know some churches they really have some services like maybe uh, Wednesday you see they go and pray and things like that and I knew someone who always said that they are lazy people they don't want to work he's a Christian and he says where did God teach that he always asked that question. But it got to a point in his life, he wanted prayer every moment. And my question is that the people that will come and pray for you or pray with you, wouldn't they go to work? Hallelujah. You know you are like one of them. Hey, but me, 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 I don't, me, I don't have time. When there's trouble, 
you begin to have time. True or false? There are some people, when even the church is closed, they want the church to be open for them to come and pray. And they will pray, ah, and God will open the door and blessing will come. What do you think those people should do? One, listen to me. Your trial, what made you pray a lot was preparing you to be a prayer warrior. But when we get it, you were praying for this Bible because the cover is nice. And he prayed ah, and God gave this Bible to him. Because he's gotten the Bible, no more prayer. But the truth is that God could have given this Bible to you on the first day. But he didn't. He was training you. So that you know how to pray. But the problem with us is that when we get what we want, we begin to sleep. We don't pray again. I've known people who, when they were sick, I prayed for people like that before. One was even very, 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 very close. And they said, in fact, if God heals me, I will serve him. He was very, very, very close to me. He's my own father. <laughs> he was so sick. And he thought he would die at that time. Years ago, about 20 years ago. We prayed. I led him to Christ. When he got well, he said, I will serve the Lord if God heals me. I assume you make a care. And God healed him. <laughs> he went to church. It's not like he left church. He went to church. He even became elder. After eldership, God, take your church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And my, me and him were always fighting. I said, I always reminded him. I said, you see, the things you said uh, to God, now that God healed you, you see, you are certain that you don't want to go to church. So come, let's go. So when he was, anytime he was in Accra, those of you who, who knew him when we were downstairs, those, those days he was strong. I would pull him to church. I said, you go. You come and you sleep. I said, even if you sleep, you sleep in church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, because many people are like that. Oh God, when you heal me, I will serve you. After they are healed, Maybe that process made you see the faithfulness of God. So you could serve him better. Hallelujah. So what we need to understand, that trials come for a reason. Hallelujah. They are not just there for nothing. If you open your eyes and if you ask God, he will let you know. And by the time that you come out of every trial that I've gone through, I have come. You see, there were, there were times in my life I never had patience. Patience, I friend, patience. And you woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. As for, as, for, as for human patience, I have one here. But I didn't have patience. The little thing, my heart. Then there was a, there was a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was in 2010. And what was coming and how it had started coming i just told my wife i said i have to pray and i began to pray and fast for patience and long suffering that's my turn around i began to pray for it like on a daily basis and in fact when the, at the program everything i prayed everything was happening and my siblings were so angry. I was the only one calming everybody down. But I would have been the leader. I'm telling you. Because I, 
couldn't have handled it. But I saw it coming. And I said, God, that is when I understood. Watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. That's when I understood it. Because I saw what was coming. And I knew that if God doesn't give me grace, something will happen. So I kept praying. I kept praying. I kept praying. And God gave me patience. And you know what? After that, God never took the patience away from me. And I have seen in my life from 2010 to now, I have not been like before 2010. There are things. You people, you think, oh, Daddy, do you have a threat? Daddy. He was crazy. He was crazy. I can show you marks on me. The little thing I will fight. I would give up. And I, I wasn't fighting people who were like my size. When I was a kid, I was very small. Very, very little. And I wasn't fighting people my size. I was fighting people like you. And if I fight and I lose, next time I would, I would target you. What you are passing? Stone or something. Bam! Then I'll run away. <laughs> Patience. None whatsoever. I, I, look, but God, you see, God prepare us for some, some things. And you, people, and that is what I'm telling you. I went through certain things to develop certain things. And now I stand here and you think I'm the best gentleman. <laughs> you have no idea what I had to go through to come to where I am. Amen. Amen. Don't tell me that, oh, then you see me too, I'm going through mine. <laughs> I submitted to it, prayed, and God has brought me this far. There are things you go through. I look at it, I smile. I don't condemn you because I know what it is. And it's because of my own trials. It's because of my own pain that I've gone through. God taught me lessons in those days and brought me to the point where I can talk to you. Hallelujah. I, I'm, listen, many, many, many pastors, many, many people who preach have gone through certain things in their life that you don't know. It's part of the preparation. It's part of the process. So when we stand before you, it's not like we don't understand you. We know what you're going through. Jesus is our perfect example. He had to go through certain things. And Bible says that because of that, he can really identify with our problems. He can because of what he had gone through. We grow in our prayer life when we go through trials and crises and difficulties because that's when we pray there are people they will never pray until there's a problem they will never go to a prayer meeting when you see them in a prayer meeting first thing you have to ask them is that and then they are what's the problem today because when that problem is solved you will see that person again the next time you see the person it means that there is a problem hallelujah but what they were supposed to do is when they pray and something happens, it's supposed to really teach them and let them grow. Christians are not growing. We are, so every day we want somebody to pray for, about something for us. Every day. When are we going to mature to be able to pray for somebody? Let, let's quickly look at this scripture. Let's go to James chapter 1. Uh, yeah. James chapter 1. I'll just do this and then I'll move on to what I'm doing today. Hallelujah. Let's read from verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, what is it going to do to your life? Because you know that the testing of your faith does what? It produces what? Perseverance. So it produces something in you. It helps you to be able to begin to persevere in trials. Hallelujah. And then after that, what happens? Let perseverance does, do what? 
finish its work. Don't cut it. Don't cut it. Let perseverance finish its course. Many of us, we don't allow perseverance to finish its work in our lives. We cut it short. Hallelujah. There are times in our lives that what we are going through, we ought to really go through it to the full. That is why Jesus doesn't cut it. He makes you go through it, but he supports you. He walks with you through it. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you see, when if Jesus had solved your problem on the first day, you will never grow. And you will never even understand it. But as you walk through it one week, two weeks, three weeks, what vampire and call Nesis you. Because if he had done it the first day that you prayed, next week we 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 And that was 2011, I think, yeah. I was going through some kind of tough, difficult time that would have killed you if it was you. I'm telling you. And then, I get a call from Papa Buofe. You know him? I get a call from him. He calls me, and he doesn't call. Oh no, just old friend. No. By this time, he calls me. And he said, George, I said, Daddy, he says, I dreamt about you. I said, Papa, hey, what should I want me one wolf from me, dear? And then young call a diet. Papa, na diet bear. And I'm saying it to you, if you like, go to a crop or he's there, go and ask him. And he said, I dreamt about you. And a snake has bit a very poisonous snake has beaten you three times, not once, not twice, three times. And I was there, so I was worried. And I was just trying to really help you. And then, someone showed me a leaf. And he says that, if you put this leaf on it, all the poison will come out and you'll be free. So immediately, I went to take the leaf, and I was going to put on it. Immediate, by the time, I almost did it. Then an angel of the Lord appeared and he said, what are you doing? Stop it. Don't do it. It's his process. He has to go through it. Amen. Amen. He said he was confused. He's looking at me the way I'm suffering. The poison is just going through me and you know, I mean, I was suffering. And he's holding this leaf which can solve the problem immediately. But he said, the angel said, don't do it. So he looks at the leaf. He looks at me. He looks at the angel. (laughs) And he threw it away. And he sat there looking at me. No prayer, nothing. And me, I was suffering. And he said, when I woke up, I prayed for you. I said, pray again. (laughs) Because what I'm going through... And it wasn't, it was <laughs> the worst thing I have ever suffered in my life. But God took me through it. And by the grace of God, I'm standing. I'm standing. So, I don't know what else is coming. But this one makes me able to endure pain because I know what I went through and I know how bad it was yet because of his grace I went through it so tomorrow or even today if something else comes I'm able to understand I won't go into details But I'm telling you something. On a Sunday like this, I was an elder in the church. Not just a member, but I was an elder in the church. I held positions in the church. Not only was I an elder, 
but I was uh, the president of a group in the church. I was a uh, chairman of the fundraising committee. I was a uh, district. Uh, uh, if I finally I was a president, more or less, because uh, uh, the other one went. And I became a Presbyterian council member for Greater Accra Presbytery. And not only that, I was uh, a member of the planning committee for uh, like conventions for the presbytery, not the district people, presbytery. Hallelujah. But on a Sunday service like this, I was suspended. And the group I was leading was suspended. On Tuesday, I was reinstated. I said this one won't happen. Where you suspended me, that's where you have to reinstate me. Hallelujah. And give reasons. Because I haven't done anything. Hallelujah. So I know what suspension in church means. I understand it. Hallelujah. I want you to really understand that you go through things to prepare you for things yet to come. You go through them and ask him. I never stopped doing anything I had to do. People looked at me and said, People left the church because of me. I called them and I said, Look, if it is because of me that you are leaving, I'm sitting in church. I'm calling you from church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they came back. They all came because they were angry. And they said all kinds of things. I said, even me, I'm not saying anything. So how dare you say anything? Is it your pain? It's my pain. And I'm going through my process. What has that got to do with you? Amen. I thank you for supporting me, but I come to church. Because if Jesus come right now, you are sitting at home, you go to hell. They came. But I know what it means. I've gone through it. And I understand it. Hallelujah. Amen. They prepare you for what is yet to come. Hallelujah. Because the things that I never understood what I was going through. And I was like, I, I remember one night. You remember you and Amman and the rest and the, some present people, they came for a meeting at Mrs. Afro's house. I mean, I remember that vividly. They called me. I said, look, let's let God work in, in this. Hallelujah. Because I understood it. And I prayed about it. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to say something to you. That will really, you, you will be surprised. And when we're going through things, beloved in the Lord, because you go through something. I'm happy God is doing. Look, at that time, when I had gone through all this, I prayed to God, God, what did we do wrong? Is what we are doing wrong? And he knows what we're doing. It was evangelism, I mean, things like that. And that is what created the problem. So, <laughs> I told my wife, when everything had settled, I said, uh, Madam, you know what? We have to go and wait before the Lord. And I don't want to do it anywhere. We, let's travel outside of Ghana. And I found a place. I hope Casey in, the, in Kansas City in the US. I said, let's go for one month. I, and I'm telling you something. That's the best thing of this church. In my pain, in what I was, my trial, what I was going through, I told God, I said, God, I want you to talk to me. I want to wait before you. So we prepared to go for two weeks. Then just before that time, we saw that Apostle Maldonado was doing cap. So I said, look, let's do this. Let's go to cap first. From cap, we go to IHOP. Then when we go to cap, we realized that Apostle Rennie will do a program uh, two weeks, I mean, after, I mean, three weeks after cap. So it fitted in the program we had. So we said, oh, we'll go to that one. So immediately we went online and registered. So we went to um, uh, Miami for, um, I think, about five days. From there, 
we went to Kansas City. We stayed there for two weeks in the prayer room, always praying. Always praying. Always praying. You go, go online and check ihopkc.org. You see it on, online. They have a prayer room, global prayer room. Every day people are there praying and there's worship 24-7. It not, from the day they started, worship has never ceased in that room. Every moment there's worship. So we're there. Me and her, we pray. And then we pray. And then we kept doing it for two weeks. After that, we went to Dallas for another one week. And then we came back to Ghana. When we came, we were fired up. Hallelujah. So we began, we were so excited to do the things of the Lord. Then we, before oh, we saw that February, there was another program. I had day. <laughs> so we said, we'll go again. So in February, we went again. And that was when God spoke and he said that you have to leave that church and start this church. That is how it happened. On Sunday night, after everything had finished, we were leaving on Monday. We went there on Tuesday. The program was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We went to church on Sunday. Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Church has closed. We were just about leaving to our hotel and the next day. And then Apostle met us and he said, Oh, when are you going back to your country? And then we said, We are going the next day. He said, oh, God bless you. Have a safe flight. And then he turned around and I said, But he didn't pray for us. Then he turned around. Said, oh, sorry, sir. Let me pray for you. So he began to pray. The moment he began to pray, he began prophesying. And that's the birthing of this church. That's the birthing of this church. So I want you to understand that we, we, if, if we had not really understood and went through our process, you would not be sitting here today. You could, you could be, have been anywhere else and I could be in where I used to be. Hallelujah. But what I want you to understand is that in that pain, in that whatever you are going through, God is going to bring something good out of it. All that you need to do is to have patience, take time, go through the process. You think it ended there? It didn't. You, kept going, you keep going through things. You keep going through things. Because they are bound to come. But how you handle them will determine how it will end. Amen. All right, so I'm going to the next thing, how to walk through trials. There are many ways, but I'll, I'll just share some with you, and I pray that I'll finish. Amen. How to walk through trials. As for trials, they will come. But how you manage to go through them is another thing. Amen. Number one, know the word of God and hold on to the promises in, the, in his word. Know the word of God and hold on to the promises in his word. When you are going through any kind of trial, the first thing is that know the word of God. Because the promises of God are there to support you to go through your trials. Hallelujah. He has promised that, that he will never leave nor forsake us. So if I'm going through trials in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. Hallelujah. He says, I will be with you until the end of the age. So, I'm going through trial and I'm not asking God, where are you? Because his promise is that he will be with me until the end of the age. Hallelujah. So, whatever I'm going through, I know God doesn't abandon his children. And I know his word enough to hold on to that word. Can't even take the Bible and read it. It is what is in you. The things that you have already studied. The things that you have already learned. That is where what the Holy Spirit is going to use. So he will come and remind you of what you have already learned. What is his purpose? Jesus said, it is good for you that I go. 
so that he will come. The things that I have said that you know, he will explain them to you. So in that moment of your pain, he comes. Because at that time, Master, the thing here cannot read. If you take the Bible, your tears will wet the Bible. So sometimes you can't even do anything. So what is inside of you? I remember one, uh, one time, uh, the time that I'm talking, Papa called me. I remember that time. And I, one day I was crying. And I was in my room. And as I was going through that cry and everything, the Holy Spirit visited me. And he told me, he said, stop crying. And I was like, you don't understand what I'm going through. He looked at me. And you know what he said? He said, stop seeking the sympathy of men. You know, when you go through pain and trials, you talk by heart. No, have you... Have you gone through anything before? You see that you want everybody to sympathize with you. So you begin to say things you don't have to say. And God told me, he said, stop it. Don't try to seek the sympathy of men. When you try to seek the sympathy of men, you lose mine. I was like, huh? And then the next thing he said was that, be still and know that I am God. My wife is here. God is my witness. Immediately I said, search this thing on the computer there. There was a computer sitting in the hall there. I said, and play that song. And it was played the whole day. Be still and know that I am God. You don't know why I like that, like that song. It saved me in my pain. And it was, it was a word God spoke to me. He said, be still and know that I am God. This is not the time to seek people's sympathy. You need to seek me. Be still and know that even in this situation, I am God. Hallelujah. So, I think it was two days later. I think it was a Friday. So, it was a Sunday that Papa called me and told me about the dream. And I put all together and I understood. I understood it. Hallelujah. Listen. The things that we go through, we need to know his word. Because at that time, to tell you the truth, <laughs> I couldn't read the Bible. I couldn't read the Bible. But after that, I began to read because he comforted me hallelujah hallelujah second corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 why does it take so long is it there now okay all right for our light and momentary what are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all hallelujah another person talks about the momentary is like temporal hallelujah our temporal the troubles that we are going through they are temporal anything you are going through here it's temporal have an eternal perspective on life eternal perspective don't be focused here on things here we we our minds are so much set on here that is why we can't deny the self because jesus said that let's deny but we cannot so as we begin to go through trials we tend to really focus on the now forgetting what eternally is reserved for us so paul says that for our light and momentary troubles or our light and um, temporal troubles are achieving for us 
if we are able to go through, through them, they are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Hallelujah. So have an eternal perspective. Don't sit down and always be thinking about here. Second Corinthians, and it's first. First Corinthians chapter 15. Hallelujah. I think verse 19. Quickly. Yeah, it says, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be. If your, your, your life depends on today and what you can do and live for and have today and not on the glory that is yet to be revealed, you are most to be pitied. You sit in church, but you are pitiful. That's what the Bible is saying. So we need to have an eternal perspective. It is not about what you can have today. It is not about how much money you can get today. My beloved, uh, you are my children. So my beloved children, let me, let me speak to you. The reason you are unable to stand strong in the Lord and be committed to the things of the Lord is because of what you can gain today. Our mindset is too much dwelling on the things we can get today. And you are not the first person and I'm not the first person having that kind of mindset. That is why Paul wrote this. In the same way, that is why in Colossians he, he said that be what? Heavenly minded. We think too much about here. Amen. But if we can learn and understand God's word, that is why to go through trials, you need to know the word of God and hold on to the promises. Because he has promised, like Paul was saying, that these things that we are going through now, they are temporal. So even though I'm going through trials, I tell God, Lord, this is tough. But I'm ready to sacrifice to go through this because of what is yet to come. You don't understand. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. I'll show you something and then I'll move on. Um, verse 2, I think from verse 2 yeah amen. amen are we here I, I don't think you guys are happy amen. amen yeah fixing our eyes on who the, the who the pioneer and perfecter of faith and now listen to this for let, let me show you something uh, we don't have a pointer here, but I'm going to show you something. I'm going here to show you something. You see here, you see this thing? What is it? What does it mean? Trials, pain, suffering. Amen. So he says that for the joy set before him, he endured the suffering. The trial, yeah, give me something like this, yeah. Let me not break your TV for you. Hallelujah. So he says that, for the joy set before him, for the eternal joy, for the eternal thing that was set before him, he was willing to endure this one. Endure what? The pain, the suffering, the crisis, the trials, whatever he had to go through, he was able to go through it. Hey, the next one is dangerous. Doing what? Because of a Nimguasi Kakrebe County and Crawford Kawasam Kakrenti. Yeah, yeah, no, well, Abba. Hallelujah. Do you think dying on the cross was fun? Bible says it was the most shameful death. Yet Jesus had to go through it. He had to overlook the shame. He had to really 
see the shame and then step on it and go through it why because of what hallelujah and what was that joy sitting down at the right hand side of his father hallelujah simple where do you want to sit where do you want to go and you don't want to go through the pain jesus had to endure it he had to endure the cross beloved let me tell you something what is happening to you you are not the first person hallelujah somebody's testimony is worse what someone else had gone through is worse than what you are going through i'm telling you you see you see some until today that i'm telling you what i've gone through you see me and you think i'm a gentleman and you think <laughs> as for this uh, about the oh dear walk anymore <laughs> who are class five i was at class two hallelujah and then i mean we can say where do class five but me i was at class two worse than your class but i went through it and today you see me and you think that yeah so oh dear, oh dear. no 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 don't think like that because what i went through maybe you would have died hallelujah the truth of the matter is that everybody goes through something even jesus so what did he do he looked at what was set before him and he endured the cross now listen to me i said number one is what knowing the word he knew what has been said about him he knew that after going through that pain that cross he was going to sit at the father's right hand side what kept him going was the promise that you sit there he knew the word so he held on to the promise even though it was difficult he held on to it even though it was painful he held on to it and after he had gone through it he got what has been promised and now he's sitting at the right hand side of the father come for your stick If Jesus passed the test, he gives you the grace to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. Because I don't have too much time. But I'll try and then finish it. When you are going through trials, you, le- you, le- you need to learn to pray without ceasing. Bible says that whatever you are going through, when you are going through any kind of trouble, James chapter 5, James chapter 5, 13 and 14. Let's, let's stick to the evening at 13. Hallelujah. James 5, 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Hi. Is anyone here in trouble? Talk by heart. Do what? Let them do what? When you are in trial, he says you have to do what? So in your time of trial, if you want to come out successful, you ought to learn to pray. Hallelujah. That is a moment and that time eh, we pray all kinds of prayer. Hallelujah. All kinds of prayer I prayed on that time. Sometimes you can't say anything. You pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Let's quickly look at that. And pray in the spirit on all occasions. Including times that. Including times that you are. Is that not an occasion? So, 
<laughs> he says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people too. As you are going through your trial and praying, pray for me too. Oh. You think I'll say that pray for you alone? No, no, no. Paul said pray for us too. So we are asking as well. When you are praying, the moment you are crying, that prayer goes. So that's when I want you to pray for me. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so pray. Learn to pray. Bible says, First Thessalonians 5, 7, says, pray without ceasing. Don't stop praying. Hallelujah. Don't do what? Pray. Pray. In those times, keep praying. Christians, today, we don't want to pray. When we are in crisis, instead of praying, we rather discuss it. You ought to learn to pray in those moments. I am not saying in that time, listen to me carefully because I'll get to that as well. I don't, this one, I am not asking you to ask somebody to pray for you. I said you have to do what? Stop, even if you can't do anything, pray in the spirit. Just pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. Because you don't even know. Because sometimes you get confused. You don't even know what to say. Don't worry. Pray in tongues. Your spirit will be praying to God. Amen. Amen. So we need to learn to pray in our trials, in our temptations. And you see, everybody sitting here this morning have one trial, one pain one suffering or the other true or false why any problem there why any challenge of them i don't pay why they will be okay so what does the bible say you have to do are you praying huh john says no david john says no he's not praying so john what do you have to do now you have to pray okay who is not praying here now God bless you. So what do you have to do now? Pray. And yeah. Monday move free heaven burn right. And I have no pay. Hallelujah. But what you have to do if you are not doing is to pray. That's what the Bible is saying. He says in those moments, pray. And I will encourage you. And I will even challenge you that in these moments where everything is going the way it's going, it is time for Christians to pray. Because we are in trouble. We are in crisis. But unfortunately, <laughs> hallelujah. Don't get me wrong, oh, but I'll say it. We don't have to be afraid to say what the Bible says we have to say. Amen. Amen. In this time, it's not a matter for placard. Though. Hallelujah. I said it's not a matter for what? Miminka demonstration. We say placard. Hallelujah. It's not a time for placard. It's a time to do what? We have to pray and Christian go. I'm not talking about the world. Let the world do what they want to do. But Christians are supposed to do what? We join. And then you're really a better answer then. What is the Bible teaching you? We have come to the point where the world is dictating for us. The one says take placard. Then you know. Instead of us telling the world that this is the time to seek the face of God. Instead of that. As telling the world that this is the time to pray. Yeh knock off a placard. Me let me encourage you. Hallelujah. You see, the point is that if you say the truth, you can get some passion, but you don't care. Hallelujah. I didn't pay anything to say what I said. It's free. Hallelujah. The only cost is passion, but it's trouble. It's suffering. And Bible says that I'll go through it anyway. So me, I'll say it. And if you, uh, uh-huh, you see, they are videoing. 
So they will put it online somewhere. Somebody will see and insult me. But the truth of the matter is that I will still encourage every Christian in this nation to begin to pray for Ghana. Hallelujah. Let us pray. That's our responsibility. We have to stand in the gap and intercede for this nation. It's, our, it's the only nation you have. You don't have another nation. Let's rise up and pray. We are too lazy. We can't take Christ to this one by no suit. <laughs> but me when I go went to work, I'm tired though. So what? If work will solve your problem, your problem would have been solved long ago. Hallelujah. Work can give you money, but it can't solve the other problem that comes with it. Understand that you have to do what? Every Christian in this country is going through one crisis or the other. I have mine. You have yours. And the country has its own crisis. But as for Christians, we have to do what? Rise up and pray. That is why as a church, every Wednesday, we pray for this nation. Hallelujah. We fast and pray for the nation Ghana. We pray for Israel. Because Bible says uh, we have to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says do what? Yeah, yeah, but so fast in the cry, and yeah, yeah, Jesus said. There are some things you have to do what? The problem in Ghana right now, eh? You have to fast and pray. It's not for it's not prayer alone. No. What we are going through now, hallelujah. <laughs> Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. Learn to be still and trust that God will rescue you. He takes you through it. His rescue, you see, God's rescue program is interesting. You know? <laughs> this is God's rescue program. Snake is coming to bite you. Hallelujah. And the snake is here. And God looks at the snake and he says, Let's go. Hallelujah. But he said, God, but the snake is there. He says, let's go. Who has authority over all snakes? Give me Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Hallelujah. Okay, snake is there. This is God's rescue plan. Not only say scorpion is also there. But Jesus says, let's go. Jesus, what are you talking about? The, don't you see snake? He says, let's go. No, no, there is snake. I thought you were going to save me. But you said I should, the snake is there. I should pass where the snake is. Then he says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. That's God's rescue plan. Hallelujah. His rescue plan is for you to go through it. Hallelujah. So as we are going, we trample upon that snake. We kill it. We overcome every power of the enemy. So tomorrow... When we have to pass that way, we know that we have overcome this place. Hallelujah. We have done what? So because we have overcome now, we come freely. We are not afraid of anything. But if God saw the snake here, and he says, hey, no, no, no. Let's go. Let's pass here. And God uses this place. And then we go. And then when we were coming back, the place is flooded. We can't use here. We have to go and use there. No, 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 God. There was a snake there. 
you will always be afraid of that snake. Hallelujah. God doesn't want you to be afraid of this snake. So he says that I have given you authority to trample upon that snake. You see, the problem is that don't run away from the devil. Trample upon him. Overcome him. Hallelujah. The problem with Christians today is that we are running away from the trouble. We are running away when we've been given authority to trample upon it. And that is why they keep coming because they are not dead yet they are still around hallelujah if you trample upon it he will be afraid of you he will come but he knows that you know the way to overcome hallelujah Hallelujah. that's God's rescue plan he's not running away you see that's why Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego if you don't bow down you go into this fire we are not afraid of the fire we know God will rescue us if even he doesn't rescue us we will not bow down hallelujah how did God rescue them he danced with them in the fire that's his rescue plan he made them go into the fire and he danced with them in the fire and by the end of that trial the king's heart changed and he said nobody should speak against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego hallelujah do you know why people are speaking against your god because you are always running so they don't even believe your god has any power to do anything they don't believe because if you say your god has power why did you run away Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, we are here because God wants us to be here. We are here this morning because God wants you to hear this. It has to change your life. It has to give you a new perspective about life and about your walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah okay let me go to number four there are plenty of things i have to say but there's no time maybe one day i'll just go back and treat only that okay number four and you, re- you remember i said earlier that you have to pray now listen to number four you have to share with trusted christians it could be pastors and other people who will pray with you hallelujah so not only will you pray but you will share with others who can pray with you not only are you supposed to go to people and ask them to pray for you or pray with you but you also have to learn how to pray so we have two points here if you want to go through a trial successfully you have to pray but you have to ask other people also to pray for you hallelujah i'm not talking about people who will gossip about it i'm talking about people who you can trust that they are going to pray hallelujah james chapter 5 16. what does it say it says that when you are in trouble or when you are sick or when you are in something therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other confess your weaknesses your crisis your troubles whatever you are going through share it with a trusted person that you know will hold you up in prayer somebody that will hold your hands with you and say let's pray hallelujah unfortunately we talk to people who can spread the gossip fast instead of talking to spirit-filled people who will pray with us hallelujah we need to learn we need to begin to learn to know people many christians today you see our problem is that eh, but even if you go and talk to somebody he will pray because you yourself you are a gossiper so you think everybody is a gossiper because if i come and tell you my problem 
you are quick to spread it. So you can't trust anybody to keep it as well. Hallelujah. But when you become faithful and could hold on to people's issues and pray for them, you will be sure that you are not the only one walking on earth who can keep things. You will know that there are other people who can also keep things and you will go and talk to them and they will support you in prayer. Who is your prayer partner? Who is your prayer partner? Who is it (laughs) <laughs> that if you are in a crisis you can talk to even apart, let's say apart from your pastor some people cry this type of people some people they go even, they don't even go to pastors they don't even talk to pastors they are living in a world where they don't trust anybody including their pastor they don't tr- even god they don't trust god It's true. There are people who cannot even trust God. They don't even trust God. God is going to save them. That is why when they don't have money, the first thing is go to an unbeliever and ask for money. They can't even trust God that God will give to them to go to God. Amen. You see, when I was saying it at first, you didn't understand. When I said you people can't trust God, you thought, uh, oh, I mean, how can you say that? You see that you yourself, you don't trust God. Amen. Have you seen that? Where's your first stop? Hmm? Where's your first stop? Man or God? I have one. Where's your first stop? Man or God? Hmm? God. You sure? So why do you now complain that my bumpire and your mean yes? Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the problem. You see, I always say that Christians say we are interesting. We are quick to answer. We don't even reflect on the question. We don't think about it. We answer boom near the tour. But the next question makes us think and we see that the first answer that we gave is so wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Learn to reflect on things. Amen. Okay. Now, so, James teaches us, and I can give you examples in the Bible. When Abimelech was in trouble, when he had taken... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Abraham's wife. What did he? Abraham, a man of God, a trusted man of God, had to pray for the, the wombs of the woman in her, his house to be opened again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me give you one. Let's go to this one. Amen. Second Kings chapter 4. 18. To 37. I won't read everything. When you go home, you read it. Hallelujah. But let's read um, um, yeah, 18. The, the child grew, and one day he went out to his father, who was with. You know, do you remember the Shunammite woman? Okay, and Elisha. Okay, so let's go on. Verse 24. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, when the child died, lead on, don't slow down for me. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you. Hallelujah. Go to verse 28. I'm just picking uh, bits and pieces so you understand what happened. When, he, when she saddled the horse, he went straight to Elisha. Did I ask for a, you for a son, my Lord? She said, didn't I tell you don't raise my hopes? You said you wanted a child. Oh, she didn't say because she didn't ask for anything so you you thought i ha- i needed a child me i know i don't want problem so i know i don't have a child and i didn't ask for one you perceive that i needed a child and you prayed and i got one now 
you have made me have a, a, a joy in my heart and love for this kid and now you take him away. Hallelujah. You've taken him away. Did I ask you? I didn't. Hallelujah. You raised my hopes for nothing. Verse 32 to 37. When Elisha reached the house, there was the, there was the boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay on the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. And he stretched himself out on him. The boy's body grew warm. A dead body is cold, but he re- began to receive warmth, but he was still not awake. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite. And he did. When she came in, he said, take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed down to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Hallelujah. When you are in crisis, who do you go to? He knows the source of her blessing. So she ran to the source. And he, she knew that Elisha was a prophet of God. So he went to God through the one that God used to bless him. Hallelujah. Many, many people, they're making a mistake in their life. A lot of Christians make that mistake. And listen to me carefully. I am not trying to make any pastor or any man of God a God. But I'm saying that learn from the Shunammite woman. Stop running around. Know the source that God used to bless you. Know where you are coming from. And know where you are standing now. And know how you got to where you are. With that, it's easy for you to be able to go back to the source. Unfortunately, that's not what Christians do. Hallelujah. This woman went to where she had to go to. And she got a solution. Beloved in the Lord, I've said this many times here. If we want to see what the hand of God, the power of God back again in the lives of believers and in the life of the church, let's go back to the basics in the Bible and learn. Because with 10 things, we have 10 things, we have begun to mess things up. And we're doing things the way we feel we have to do it without any respect to scripture amen <laughs> hallelujah there are many things i can talk about but let's go to the fifth one and i'll i'll finish i'll close this is the last one rejoice in your trials i can see your hand on your head already (laughs) how can i rejoice in my trial how is that possible hallelujah rejoicing in our trial seem impossible but it is possible when we understand that there is a purpose for our trials so when you are in that situation you are looking for the purpose you are not looking for something else God, why did this one come? How do I grow out of this? Anything that I go through, I will have to come out a better person. Hallelujah. You you didn't understand it. 
I said, anything that I have to go through, any trial, any pain, any suffering that I have to go through, I have to come out as a better person. Hallelujah. Do you still not understand? You still can't get it? I said, any pain, any suffering, any difficulty, any challenge that you go through, when you come out of it, you have to come out as a better person. Hallelujah. Why am I saying that? Because any time gold is taken through fire, it comes out shining brightly. Hallelujah. The value of gold is determined by the quality of it and the quality can only come out when it has gone through fire don't run away from your trial because that is going to make you it's going to bring you value you still don't understand let me give you Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when they went through the fire I don't think they have ex- had that experience before with Jesus dancing with them in the fire. But when they went through that fire, when they came out, the respect they gained was better than the respect they had at first. If the king respected them that much, he won't put them in the fire. But when they came out of the fire, the king saluted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only did he salute, he respected their God. If the God that you serve is going to be really honored by the people around you, it depends on the things that you went through and how you managed it and came out of it. Hallelujah. It is important that as Christians, we understand that whatever we are going through today, we need to come out as better people. You don't have to come out broken. You have to come out polished. Hallelujah. I said you have to come out what? With greater value. Greater value. Because, you see, anything that you go through, if you stand and you pass through it, you gain an experience you didn't have before you went through it. So when you come out, you are a better person because you have learned new things you have experienced new things and now you have really matured you have gone to another level so if you couldn't endure that pain now you have seen what it is you have seen how god took you out of it you begin to trust god for greater things your value as a person your value as a woman hallelujah you see some people when they go through things they rather easily give up in the middle of it they give up but it doesn't matter where you go to if you didn't complete the process You'll be like a butterfly who doesn't fly. You know some butterflies don't fly. You'll be like one. You'll be like a cockroach. Yeah. A, b- <laughs> a butterfly that doesn't fly is like a cockroach. You can't fly. But if you complete that process, you can fly. Rejoice in the trial. Why? You rejoice in the trial because you are learning something out of it. And you know. And let me tell you something. Put this at the back of your mind. Anytime there is any crisis in your life, know that there is a breakthrough coming. Anytime. Whatever the crisis is. It could be sickness. It could be sickness. And maybe that sickness will make you die but you are going to heaven. Is it not better than sitting here? Here. With all the things that are going on. I wish I'm in heaven already. Hallelujah. Even if you die, you go into a better place. Some people, 
when they are in that kind of crisis now they go to juju man and go to all kinds of things and mess up their faith better to walk through that even if you should die your purpose is probably to die in that and you end up in heaven than to cut that thing short and go to a juju man and come out i don't know who, who you will now be hallelujah now you don't know whether you are serving god or you are serving something else so and they sit they still sit in church oh. so when they come to church and then oh pastor say oh there's a testimony uh, mr kakra come come and give your testimony oh mr kakra has a testimony you, you all remember mr kakra how sick he was and we prayed for him now he's standing here then he also have mouth praise the lord meanwhile he knew where he went so as he's standing here he doesn't know whether he should attribute it to god or to where he went from here as soon as he finished giving the testimony he goes to sit down wednesday he goes to the shrine to go and say nana medawasio find a son here meanwhile before he got sick he was a true man of god and he could stand and without any thoughts whatsoever praise the lord because he knows there's no other god that he knows apart from the god of heaven now when he got the trial and his trial was sickness he couldn't stand so he went looking for another god please even if you don't get well and you die die and go to heaven i said do what die and go to heaven because it is better to die in your sickness and go to heaven if that is how god wants you to die praise the lord i will rejoice even in that hallelujah you can sit down rejoice in your trial let's go to first peter chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 in all this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have to you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials these have come so that your so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise glory and honor when jesus christ is revealed listen before the verse 6 he had spoken about something let's go to four and five i'm going to show you something this morning and i'm ending here so let me and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you now listen your inheritance is where it's kept in heaven so if you are worldly minded your inheritance is not here it has been kept where stop following things here you'll be blessed here there's no two ways about that god everything belongs to god if he decides to make you a millionaire here praise the lord but that's temporal i said from the beginning have what use the words i used this morning no what did i say i said have eternal perspective hallelujah have eternal perspective okay you let me go on and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you go on who through faith are shielded by god's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time next verse in all this so the in all this is coming from where we just read 
in all this you greatly rejoice in all this pain suffering whatever we greatly rejoice now uh, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. now let me explain to you we rejoice in the trial because we know what is ahead of us so as i'm going through the trial i am not looking at what i can get today but i'm looking at where i'm going to end so even in this when everybody is crying i'm rejoicing because i know that no matter how this is going to end there is still a better place for me to go there is still an inheritance stored for me elsewhere so this is my transit place and whatever i go through here is temporal so i'm able to rejoice in this that is why james also wrote and he says count it all joy when you go through all. so you see they keep saying it in the bible they keep talking about it unfortunately we have not been able to come to understand what it means so in the in the crisis that we go through how many of us rejoice in our crisis how many of us are going to rejoice in our crisis from now hallelujah and that for me is why god wanted us to know what we what we are learning this is i think the fourth week or whatever god is you know god told me that today my children don't understand me and therefore we are not willing to go through what will make us better but god why do you have to take me through this before i become better why did jesus have to go through what he had to go through for you to be saved I know they are all there. That one, you are happy that Jesus, hey, he died for my sins. I am, I am who I am today because he died for my sins. You too die for something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is because we don't understand. Let me read this last scripture because I can't exhaust because time, I can't exhaust what i have to do but i think i have another week to do something Let, let's let's go to acts chapter uh, uh five verse 41 and i'm going to end with that hallelujah the apostles left the sanhedrin what are they gone through please can can you go back to probably two verses before that amen we're going to look at it F from verse 14 or 40 or oh, let's let's read from 39 it doesn't matter 39 is okay but if it is from god you will not be able to stop these men that is uh, one of the of them speaking for the people because he thought the people were, what they were doing was not right and then he stood up and he gave them a speech uh, um, telling them that look some people had come earlier you know Gamaliel Paul's master and he told them all this and then he gets to here uh, verse 39 and say uh, and he said uh, but if it is from God if these people are really from God you will not be able to stop these men you will only be uh, you only f only find yourselves fighting against God beloved in the Lord I'm telling you something this morning I have learned certain things the hard way I'm telling you I have learned certain things in the last week I mean, for instance, two weeks or probably three weeks. <laughs> I have come to really uh, revere God in another way. Not that I wasn't revering God. Not that I don't honor Him. Not that I, 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 am, I am not uh, fearful of the Lord. But the level of my fear of the Lord now is gone to another level 
it's, gone, it's just gone through the roof because God has shown me who he is. And you may not understand, there are only two people who can understand what I'm saying now. But, I'm telling you, I have now come to understand that God is a fighter. God is a fighter. He fights. And I also now understand it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. I have come to understand some things in only two weeks. God. Anytime you hear the God, if it is the God of heaven, please. So. Because if he shakes himself, it's dangerous. Let's move on. You understand me. But God will explain to you. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. Don't fight against what God is building. Do not. Because you'll be sorry. That's what Gamaliel say, said. You will only find yourself fighting against God. Now let's go to verse 40. His speech persuaded them. They heard. They believed. They stopped what they wanted to do. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now let's see what they did. When they went out, Bible says that the apostles left the side. He'd been crying. Do you know when they say flogging, do you know what it is? 30, uh, uh, 40 minus 1 lashes. That is the minimum. That is what, if they are going to flog you, that is what they give to you. It's 40 lashes. But the problem with the 40 lashes is that if you, who is really lashing, you go beyond 40, you are in trouble. So in order not to exceed, they better do 39. So that if they were not counting well, at least they didn't go beyond that. Because you that is flogging, if you go beyond 40, you yourself, you are in trouble. So it is called, it, although it is 40 lashes, it is called 40 minus 1. Because they never give you the 40. They try to give you 39 and, and keep the 1 for themselves. Hallelujah. So they gave them, and the, 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 the whip they use. By the time they finish, there's blood coming. You know what they use for Jesus? It tore his skin out. Pam! Because there are some of them, there are bones. Some there are, of them, there are pieces of metal at the tips. So when it goes into the body, it takes something out. That's how it is. And these guys were flogged. And Bible says that they came out why they have been counted what <laughs> and when you are suffering you rather become like the israelites and complain i didn't have time to go through that they are all here but i didn't have time to go through that when people begin to complain and grumble what happens beloved in the lord this morning what are you going through what are you going through what is the suffering that you are going through are you rejoicing or you are grumbling and complaining and saying all kinds of things what are you going through and how are you handling what you are going through? Because that will define who you are. That will determine who you are. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, I want us to pray this morning. I want you to be upstanding.
I just want you to play something for me. Hallelujah. Children of God, His presence is right here. Create in me a, a pure heart or a clean heart, however you want to sing it. You know that song? Yeah. Some of us, we need the joy of the Lord, the joy of His salvation, a willing spirit to sustain us in the period of our trials. Can you, can you wait? I just want you to uh, understand this so you understand the prayer. The song they are, they're going to sing and the prayer you're going to pray this morning. Psalm number 51. This is was the time that David was going through a period of suffering when he had done some bad things, killing, uh, sleeping with someone's wife, your wife, and killing uh, him. From verse ten, he says, "Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me." 11 do not cast me from your presence or take your holy spirit from me restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me and my thing is that may the lord grant you a willing spirit to sustain you in your suffering may the lord grant you a willing spirit because we need we all need a willing spirit to sustain us in times of our crisis in times of our pain and suffering in times of our i mean dark places we all need a willing spirit that will sustain us i want you to sing this from the depths of your heart and cry to him that lord i need you to give me a willing spirit i want you to restore to me the joy of my salvation to me thank you jesus the joy of our salvation oh my father i renew a right spirit within me thank you spirit of god Create in me a clean heart. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh Lord. And renew a right spirit you, within Lord. me. Father, we thank you this morning. Sing it unto the Lord. Create in me. That's your prayer this morning. Oh Lord, every new arise spirit within me. Thank you, Jesus. Cast me not away from Thy presence. Oh Lord, take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. Restore to me. Thank you, Jesus. The joy of our salvation. Father, I renew a right spirit within me. Thank you, Jesus. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy holy spirit from Joy of our salvation. 
child Oh my father I renew a right spirit within me Thank you Jesus Create in me Father we thank you A clean heart in us a clean heart Lord Oh Lord Father this morning we are in your presence Every new arise come Holy Spirit within me. I pray in the name of Jesus may you give us a new spirit a new strength yeah, so we can me. endure that which we are going through give us the right spirit the willing oh, spirit to sustain Lord. us in the pain and in the suffering that we are going through Every new arise Father trials are bound to come but when they come father in the name of jesus may you give us the strength to stand that one and come out as people that you are prepared as strengthened take not thy holy spirit from me Restore unto me the joy of our salvation. Oh, my Father, every new arise spirit within me. Beloved, I want you to lift up your hands and begin to cry unto the Lord that Father. I'm going through a lot but I need you to strengthen me to go through it as you prayed for Peter and his friends pray for me also that even in the trials and in the pain and the challenges that I'm going through I will not give up I will stand firm and I will go through it. Give me the willing spirit, the right spirit to sustain me in these things that I'm going through so I can endure. Life is beating me. Life is hard and difficult. And I have made a lot of mistakes. Trying to find solutions. Ad hoc solutions. Temporal solutions. That did not help me. But now Lord. Help me. I'm ready to go through what I have to go through. I'm ready to stand and go through that which I have to go through. Beloved, these are moments because the crisis are not going to end. They will come. This is the time to call on him to give you the strength to stand. Because they will come. This is the time to ask him to give you the strength to rejoice. Because you are crying, the enemy is happy. He, the Lord wants you to rejoice in your crisis looking forward to that which is yet to come I don't know what you are going through it's hard, I know I don't know exactly what it is but I know that they are difficult times I know Christians all over the world are struggling in one thing or the other But if you see some Christians laughing and rejoicing, it is not because they are not going through anything. It is because they have understood how to rejoice in their trials. How to rejoice in their suffering. Ask the Lord that, Lord, help me so I can also rejoice in my suffering. If the disciples were beaten, they were flogged. And they came out rejoicing. May you give me that same grace. 
I need it. Call unto him. Cry unto him. Tell him that you also need it. Because trouble is not going anywhere. Trouble is around the corner. We will keep facing them until we make it to heaven. Jesus continued to really go through it even on the cross. I don't know. But you may also be going through something. I am going through things. But he gives us the grace. We laugh and rejoice not because there is no trouble. But because our faith in God sustains us. Call on him to give you the strength. May the spirit of God really empower you. Some of us have failed in areas that we should have passed. Bring them before the Lord and tell him that Lord I failed. Because I couldn't stand the pain. I couldn't stand what I was going through. I needed the money so I had to go and fornicate to get it I couldn't stand I didn't know where my next food was going to come from so I had to steal but now I understand it would have been better to starve even, even to the point of death and go to heaven than to cut it short and now stand here not knowing where I'm going but I come to you this morning and I ask you to forgive me talk to him forgive me and give me the strength to stand so I can pass the next text Cry unto him. Call on him. He's here to help all of us. I need that strength, and you need it as well. Paul said, Not that I have already attained it. I stand here not because I have already attained that. I stand here crying for the grace myself so I can carry on, so I can rejoice. In the situation I find myself in. No, not interesting. No, not nice. I can rejoice because he gives me the grace. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who needs that strength this morning. I don't know who is ready that the Lord give me that strength this morning. Even if there is fire, I am ready to pass through that fire. I'm not running away from any fire. I'm ready to go through it. I'm ready to go through whatever I have to go through. It doesn't really matter. I'm ready. I renew Within me, a clean oh, cry unto him, cry, cry, cry. I can hear your cry. I don't know how desperate you are, I don't know how much you really desire to have that strength to go through what is coming what is coming probably might be worse than what you are even failing now know that the exam you do today the test that you pass today 
the test that comes tomorrow is much more difficult than the test you pass today even if you fail this time cry unto him that Lord give me the grace to pass next time may the Lord give you that grace that strength so you can pass restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me now lift up your hands let me pray and then we close father i thank you in jesus name you are the only source of our strength if we can't go through what is coming even what we are standing in now we need you for you are the only source of our strength many of us are weak holy spirit but you are strong and we pray and ask you this morning to give us that strength spirit of god we are your children and when we call you you respond so we call in on you now i call on you to release new strength unto all of us so we can go through that which we have to go through we will not be afraid we will not give up but we will carry on spirit of god help us now many of us are weak probably all of us are weak so we all need you what is the crisis you are going through that you need god to give you the strength to overcome thank you jesus just open your heart and let him give you that strength now let him give it to you now let him give it to you now spirit of god release it now release it now the strength to stand in the midst of trials suffering and pain release it now release it now release it right now thank you beloved just be in his presence and be ready just tell him in your spirit that lord i'm ready and let him feel you thank you holy spirit thank you thank you thank you thank you just receive that strength now receive it now receive it now receive it now receive it now receive now receive now receive right now receive right now the strength that you need take it now take it take it take it take it for you need it you need it you need it yes take it take it take it you are saying i'm weak but lord you are strong so feel me now feel me now yes
yes, yes, he's failing you. He's failing you. Yeah, you will be able to overcome. You'll be able to stand. You'll be able to go through it. Your struggle, your suffering is probably a weakness that you are saying that, Lord, help me to overcome this. Receive now. Receive. Receive, receive, receive. Take it. Yeah, he's releasing it. So receive. As he empowers you. Father, I plead that they are your children these are children of abraham who need that strength to overcome the schemes of the enemy the pain the shame the suffering that they go through like on a regular basis thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I need this strength myself. I need it myself. And you also need it, so take it. He's released it. So take it now yes take it now take it now take it right now spirit of god fill us give us the strength i thank you for what you are doing now i thank you for strengthening all of us yes 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 i thank you so much i can see many people being empowered being strengthened by the spirit of god to go through that which they are going through where you are standing now in life you are saying that lord but how can i do this but he's bringing you strength now just receive the strength that he's releasing to you take it take it take it so you can endure so you can endure take it take it so you can endure take it so you can endure take it so you can endure for you need to endure he's not taking that crisis away he's giving you the strength to go through it that's what you need that's what i need and that's what he really is releasing now strength be strengthened now holy ghost strengthen us now bring us that strength that power right now right now you are here let your fire come and refine us yes take it now take it now let a fire of God refine you. You're going through your own fire. You are like a gold. You're going to come out of this stronger. You're going to come out of this shining brightly by the power in the name of Jesus. So receive your fire. Receive it now. Receive it now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Take it now. Take it now, take it now, take it now. Take it now, take it now, take it now. Just receive it now. Receive it now, both of them, in the name of Jesus, receive it now. You need it to stand, you need it to stand, you need it to stand, you need it to stand right now. Take it, oh yes, Holy Ghost, thank you for our life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I need to talk to this woman when we close, but receive that strength now. Take it. Take it. Take it.
Take it. Take it. You need it. You need it. You need it. Let, lift those hands. Lift those hands. Tell him I surrender to you. Tell him I surrender. I surrender. It's just a sign of surrender. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Tell him I surrender, Lord. I surrender to you. I have tried with my strength, but it's not working. And I need you now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. You to lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, take it. Take it right now. Take you know you need it. So receive it now. Right now. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Watch her. Thank you, Jesus. Father, fill her now. Give her the strength to go through this crisis. To go through this challenge. For you love her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. And you, I don't know what you're going through. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus. I don't even know you. But if you will go through this, may the Lord wipe away those tears and give you the grace to walk through it. May he give you the spirit of endurance so you will endure. It's painful. It's not easy. But may the Lord help you. Take it now. Receive that strength right now. Take it right now. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Fill her now. Give her the strength right now. Take it 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 now. You know what you need. You know it. Father, I thank you for her life. Your love for her has not ceased. You still love her. Even in her weakness. May you give her the strength now. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Yes, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. You pass. Yes. It doesn't matter. You will go through it. He's your only source. And he's not abandoned you. He's not left you. He's with you. Receive it now. Father, in the name of Jesus, give her that strength. Give it to her. Give it to her. Make her strong in her weakness and take her through. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Father, I thank you. Spirit of God, I thank you. I bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just open your heart and he will do it. You don't need anyone but God. You need him and him alone. Right now. May he strengthen you and help you. Thank you, Jesus. John, John, John Dovi, John, come, come, come to the middle here. Come to the middle here somehow. And lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for his life. In Jesus' name. Help him, Holy Spirit. You know his heart and you know his strength. He's weak, but you are strong. So give him that strength 
Give it to him now. Take it now. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. He knows you are weak. He knows it. And he knows your heart. He knows your struggles. He sees you every day going through what you are going through. He sees you every day and he's ready to help you. So he's giving you the strength. He's giving it to you. Beloved, the Lord loves this guy. You see, the enemy cannot stop what God is going to do with you. He's tried. In fact, even coming here this morning was a struggle. Oh yeah, I know, it's a, it was a struggle. You almost didn't come because of this encounter. You almost didn't come because of this encounter. But the Lord wanted you to come so he will empower you. In the name of Jesus, receive. Because of your persistence to come, may the Lord give you more. Thank you, Jesus. Receive it now. Take it. Take it. The enemy can't stop you. He cannot receive what God is giving to you right now. Right now. Right now. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. Take it now. Right now. In Jesus' name. The joy of thy salvation right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence father in our weakness do not cast us away from your presence take not, take not your holy spirit from spirit us but may he rather strengthen us so we can pass the test we can go through the trials and suffering and challenges the joy of our salvation oh my father and renew the right spirit within me father in the name of jesus i thank you this morning i bless you for where you have brought us to we rejoice in our crisis in our pain in our suffering father in the name of jesus i don't belittle anyone's pain i know how it feels to go through hard and difficult times but i pray in the name of jesus may you give us the grace to rejoice even in our pain and even in our suffering may you help each and every one of us to pass every test that will come our way give us the strength holy spirit I still can't see many people who need you and I know you have not finished with us. I pray in the name of Jesus that every strength that we need to say yes to you, every strength that we need not to run away from the suffering from the challenge from the trial but to stand and go through it lord give it to us give it to us give it to us so we can stand and go through it may no one fail lord it doesn't matter what the test looks like. May none of us fail our tests. None. Absolutely none of us. May all of us stand strong. Father, for four weeks, 
you've been teaching us. And I pray in Jesus' name that give us what it takes to be overcomers. Father, even to the point of dying, may we still stand because of the grace you are giving to us this afternoon. Help us, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit. The Egyptians are coming. Just as the Israelites stood by the Red Sea. We are in such a state, Lord. There is crisis ahead of us. There is crisis behind us. There are problems on the left and on the right. We don't know where to pass. But we lift up our heads and we see you in heaven. And all you say is be still. The Egyptians you see today, you will not see her again. The Red Sea you see today, you will walk through it. Lord, may we walk through our Red Sea. Give us the grace to wait. It doesn't matter what it is. If you are with us, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because you hold our hands and take us through it. Father, may we not be afraid of the crisis to come, of the challenges to come, of the trials to come. May we not look at it, but may we look at the fact that you are with us. And because you are with us, we'll go through it. That is the faith and the grace we need. To remember always that you are with us. And because you are with us, we can overcome. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree with the songwriter that because you are with us, we can face tomorrow. It doesn't matter the crisis of tomorrow. It doesn't matter the challenges of today. Father, may you give us the grace so we can hold on to you. We can look up to you. We can hold on to the promises that you have given to us. Father, may we not fail. May we not fail. We have failed in the past. But by the power of your word, may we never fail again. May we not fail again. Not again, Lord. May we stand strong and firm because of your word. I thank you this morning. I glorify you. And I praise you. I thank you that the word itself has brought strength and new hope to each and every one of us. And the power of your spirit has quickened us. I give you praise for what you have done with us. In Jesus' name, amen.